Um, if you have a mobile phone, make sure you leave it switched off or on. south of here and if I happened to have lived here 10,000 years ago and came up I would have said Budgery Kamaru to all of you because the uh, Budgery Kamaru was the way the Eora people said g'day. Uh, we like to try and acknowledge traditional landowners wherever we go because for us as singers and songwriters and people who enjoy dancing it's actually a bit sobering to know that for tens of thousands of years there were songs sung this place and there were dancers dance and there was great celebration and yet in the space of 200 years virtually all of those songs and dances and cultural things have disappeared so wherever we go as singers and as dancers we like to acknowledge the traditional landowners
much more then. Yeah, well, I still don't get it. Why Britain have to go to war with Germany because Serbian killed an Austrian? Well, it doesn't matter, does it? I mean, I'm still going to go. I reckon it's our duty to support the mother country. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I guess they couldn't do it on their own. You're yeah, too right. Oh, and don't forget this free grub in a uniform. And I heard those French shielders are ooh la la, oh, a bit ooh. of all right. <laughs> we get to see the world and have a grand adventure with our mates. All for six bob a day. <sighs> but they say it'll be over by Christmas. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go and give those Huns what for. You and me, mate, we'll show the Kaiser what we Australians are made of. Yeah. Yes. 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 We, we soldiers of Australia rejoice in being free, free and, and not to better others do we go o'er the sea. Old England gave us freedom, and when she makes a start to see that others get it, we're there to take our part. Hail there, Australia! Oh, my brother. 
I was one of the covering party who'd been chosen to go ahead, and as our boat sneaked on in the early morning light, many of us wondered who would be the first to go. It's a peculiar experience and one of extreme suspense to be crouched down in a small boat making towards a hostile shore, not knowing the size of the force opposed to you, neither being able to use your rifles owing to the danger of shooting your own men. And then, to suddenly come under heavy machine gun and rifle fire. Many poor chaps were killed in the boats and the deeds that were done in rescue work were beyond mention. Also, the heroic advance of our fellows and the meeting with and subsequent counter-attack by their main body and the stolid resistance of our 3rd Brigade are now matters of history. <coughs> I was promoted to captain on April the 25th and am now in command of a company of about 250. I'm sorry we're limited to two pages, Fred, but you can see what it means. I have to censor all my company letters three times a week, and they in their turn are censored by the adjutant. Write again as soon as you can. Address it to Captain D. Chapman, 9th Battalion, 3rd Brigade, Intermediate Base, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, farewell for the present, your loving brother, Duncan. <laughs> Word on every soldier's lips, Gallipoli. The landing barges leave the ships, Gallipoli. The rifles held in nervous grip, eerie gleam of bayonet tips. Cads exit the coastal strips, Gallipoli. Atop the cliffs is Johnny Turk, Gallipoli. Peering through the mist and murk, Gallipoli. Human nature goes berserk, the soldiers know they mustn't shirk. Killing's just a job of work, Gallipoli. Boys, 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 haunting the ball games of history. And they hold, hold, and do as they told. History's in the making at Gallipoli. Hit the beach, the right. Son Gallipoli. This is real, the talking's done Gallipoli. Every man's a mother's son, give each one a bloody gun, they'll kill each other just for fun Gallipoli. Scale the cliffs, tell me you are Gallipoli. The shelling and the sword of stars Gallipoli. Crazy beats of Derek Lou, out of all the madness of fruit, the legend of the Anzacs and the Olympoli.
Gallipoli. Dearest Muriel, we look forward to our letters on mail day. Of course, we can't make them sound as cheerful as yours, but I'm sure you'll understand why when I tell you that we are surrounded by sadness and sorrow all the time. Do you know, Muriel, that as many as 72 operations were performed in one day in our hospital alone? You cannot imagine how dirty these poor beggars are, never able to get a wash, mud and dirt ground in, and nearly all of them covered in vermin. They feel ashamed at being so dirty, but we always tell them that if they came down any cleaner, we would never think they were in the war at all. <laughs> Under another cloudy sky, my grandmother stands among 15 wounded men. I wanted them to be young and strapping and larrikin. But as they look into the camera, they whisper things to me that flash and burn my memory. The fog of the day settles. They are chilled as they gather close their ill-fitting garments. Their neatly parted hair shows a control that they crave. But the confusions, the smells, the noise, the terror are all there in clenched half smiles and darting eyes. My grandmother's hands rest with priority on the gloved man's wheelchair. He holds his side, protecting his broken ribs and his torn abdomen. His eyes do not gaze into the camera. They dwell on a madness of pain and anger in a destiny reshaped by brutality. <coughs> I smell the slow burn of the 1918 flash and see the men move stiffly to pick up their hats. They help each other across the road to the hospital. And as Bernice wheels her man, Every bump echoes pain. <laughs>
was heard of clash of arms and belching cannon roar. Reverberant through quiet hills and vales, the fiery, thrilling message sped of call to arms to youths soft sheltered in parental love, whose eager eyes heeded not a mother's love or father's tear gemmed pride. They dropped the spades, the arts of peace and panoply for war. And all day long, youth trenched and trained and drilled and marched, till one chill darkness and a rain-drenched street, the tramp, 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 the martial tread of youthful feet. Our longing could not stay a farewell siren from a troop ship, gone into the shuddering hour before the dawn. And in her grief, her strangling, dry-eyed grief to mother heard and father, gripping hard his pain with pride, was given as to a badge. You sent your son. <clears throat> was ever word more false? God sent his son. I read, perchance believed, did God not now? Christ went, I know, accoutred in the truth, to die if need be, as indeed he knew. Consent? I grant you, there should be consent. Reluctant yielding, man is not as God, and mother in her tears must also yield. So, youth with crystal dreams and golden hopes went forth to die if need be in the cause. But slain or no, to win a hero's crown. Deck not my pride with lies, my friends. I did not, did not send my son. He went. And he lies dead. And the first time it was father's, the last time it was son, and in between your husbands marched away with drums and guns, and you never strong. 
that you were dreaming when the call sounded again and you smiled and bravely held your tears as you kissed those boys goodbye and the photos on the pianos always made you cry and now you're getting Would you sit back and reflect on the parade of the passing of your memories as your daughters change their lives, seeing more to our existence than just mothers, daughters, wives? And the first time it was fathers, the last time.
Along the way, if he could see. 